For the month of March, I'm going to be looking at an artist called Neil Gall, Gal. And he's in particular, he's drawing work. He's also a sculptor. Um, he grew up in Aberdeen. And his work is really all about sort of confusing the viewer as to what what it is they're looking at. But he's what he's done is he's made very um, simple sculptures from found materials, which he's like old cardboard crumpled pages from magazines. And then he's basically put them together in a way that intrigues the viewer, sort of gives a visual tension. Some of, some of it is collage work as well that he'll bring into his drawings. The interesting thing is that his drawings are drawings of something 3D. So he's working from, from a 3D object and making it a 2D drawing. So um, our perception of his objects, his, his 3D objects, need to be drawn particularly well in, in t terms of showing how how the models are sort of put together and just their basic interaction between different materials like he quite likes using the see-through plastic and also these um ping pong balls or just different surfaces and different objects that go together to make his drawings really sort of intriguing and interesting to look at so what I would like you to do is decide on your material so you're going to make your own sculpture which will be then drawn so what I've done is several different sculptures which I have drawn but I also photographed the sculptures so that when I was working from the the photograph I printed off in black and white the photograph of the sculpture and that helped me with my drawing in making it even more realistic you might want to even draw a grid on your on your paper to really sort of home in on details so this was the sculpture that i made which as i said i photographed and then i drew from the photograph you might want to draw directly from the actual sculpture, it's your choice. The other idea is to make your sculpture, which in a way which is called a blind sculpture. And I did this with this just air dry clay. And those of you who know me know that I'm interested in the ear and hearing. So I did a very sort of quick sculpture from from memory, really, blind of what I thought the ear cochlear area would look like. Of course, it looks nothing like that, but the interesting thing was that the sculpture made quite an interesting photograph, which I then drew from. So I'll just show you the drawing. And in this one, I brought in colour. So it's up to you. You might want to work in. I'm suggesting we all stick to pencil, but might also be worth you thinking about working in colour if that is if you're sort of particularly drawn to colour and working coloured pencils. So I'm going to go through um, really starting the drawing and I've done another sculpture here using these just polystyrene balls and I've wrapped them in brown packaging tape. So I'm going to have a go at drawing from life. I haven't photographed this one, so I'm going to draw directly from the sculpture. And it's really a lot about, with this sort of drawing, thinking about composition on the page. Obviously, we want to intrigue the viewer. So I am going to use my page fully. So I'm going to make sure that I have got a large area of my paper covered with the spheres. So as we know from drawing ellipses, it's good to keep your pencil nice and loose. Hold it loosely when you're drawing your circles. And I can see where, roughly where the circles are, even though they're covered in tape. So I'm gonna focus first on drawing the actual 
spheres and then I'm going to put in the brown tape afterwards. So this is just to get the basic shape and form and I'm just using an H pencil, so a very light pencil rather than a soft pencil. So these are different size, these polystyrene balls, so some of them are smaller than others. So once the tape starts to come in, that's when it starts to look even more sort of intriguing and slightly more puzzling as well. So not only have you got the shapes of the forms, the balls, the spheres, you've also got this brown tape, which is again, giving another dimension to your drawing different type of line, different type of surface. It's shiny. So there's some very clear gradients of tone that you're going to be seeing in your drawing. And it's also different qualities of line as well, which will make this in itself quite a challenging drawing. But at the same time, it's also going to give you plenty to describe and think about. So I'm just basically blocking in. I've got another sphere here that I need to draw in. And what I'm noticing is the shadows are going to be just as important. And this outside negative space is going to be just as important as the objects. So now that I'm happy with my basic form, I'm going to come around with a slightly stronger mark just to describe that unusual form that I'm looking at. So I'm almost like putting an outline around my, around my drawing and then details will come with a softer pencil. Probably I'll start using a 2B We've got some really nice curved lines and really nice sort of straighter lines as well. So we're drawing something that's three dimensional onto a flat surface. But the aim of this drawing is that we make the drawing really convey the 3D-ness of these shapes. And remember to sort of keep your pencil quite loose so that you're not gripping it too tightly, which is our natural habits, I think. And then once you've got your basic shape and form drawn out, I want you to take a 2B pencil. This is a 3B, so I mean a 3B, or so a, a soft pencil. And I want you to start thinking about putting in your dark, really dark areas and finding out where they are. So for me, there's sort of like triangular form here that's very, very dark. So I'm gonna press very firmly with the pencil to show that form, that hole really of where, where those dark areas are. And by doing that, I want you to think in terms of shapes. So all your dark areas are literally being blocked in as shapes. So these are predominantly shadows but what we do need to be aware of is the direction of our marks. So once I've put in those really the darkest darks, I'm gonna to start to work with a slightly softer touch of my pencil.
and it's going to start to show a sort of understanding of form through my mark making. So I'm really sort of coming quite softly here with this shadow, but I'm using my pencil to show that it's a curved form. And that I can see a graduation in tone. So there's nothing to stop you using your finger or if you've got a putty rubber, if you want to draw in as well to bring out some, accentuate some sort of areas of light. But the quality of your marks are really important. So we're gonna really sort of focus on the mark making side of this drawing. I'm gonna show you a few more of his drawings just to sort of emphasize how quality of marks is essential. So these are long drawings. You're gonna be spending a long time on them. So make sure you have an interesting setup that's going to keep your attention. And I would really suggest you work in blocks of 25 minutes. So that after 25 minutes, you stop, you have a break, you look again until it's finished. I mean, this this is, as I said, this is not going to be a quick drawing. So I'm going to show you some more of his work, but I just want you to remind you of a couple of techniques. So if you've got an area that is predominantly dark, you might want to lay a ground over that area. Again, being aware of the shape. So if it's a curved ball shape, you're going to put your marks down in a curved directional way. And then once you've smudged in and laid down your ground all the way over your form, you can start to use your rubber to take away. So that's one technique that you can use on here. Another technique that you might want to use is to start bringing in areas of cross hatching. So remember as well, the direction and spacing of your lines. So this is just ordinary hatching. So when we want to de make it denser, we're using cross hatching, which overlaps each other. Now, as I said, I'm gonna show you a really close up of one of his drawings to show you the different techniques that he has used. And what you'll notice is he's really worked on all of, of the drawing just look, at once. So he's used it as a whole and he's got quite an interesting white area there that he's just left out as a sort of gap. I'll show you a couple more of his drawings so that you can see his treatment of pencil work. I mean, the, the ones that he has of his 3D sculptures actually look 3D. So he's actually managing to convey the 3D quality in his work through his pencil marks. So they are becoming always like sculptures again. So these ones he's made out of wire. And there's quite nice strong contrast between light and dark as well and different different sort of compositional tools with his lines curving straight and really dark areas and really light areas as well so i'm looking forward to seeing you all and to seeing how you manage with your sculptures you can decide to either bring your sculpture in like this or if you want to take a photograph it, like I did with the other ones, you can do that. And then bring in, just bring in both your photograph and, and your sculpture and decide on the day which you're going to work with. So that's from this book, Neil Gould Drawing. Another book though, that really, if you are interested in this really sort of detailed type of drawing is this one here by Marty Cormand called Exploring Hyperrealism. 
again, drawing sort of very mundane things, but in, in a way which is really sort of looking at the details. So if I just show you a couple of these drawings. So for instance, a jar of water, really, really sort of hyper-realistically drawn. And also, let me show you another one. Again, this one is actually painted, but it is, again, looking at that sort of three-dimensional object and making it three-dimensional in your drawing. So I'm going to stop there, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone on the last Wednesday of the month, and hope you're all well. Take care. Bye-bye.